Hi guys, welcome back to another one. Got a, another snowblower project here. This engine's kind of a little worn out, doesn't quite run right. I tried to adjust the carburetor, clean it out, and still can't get it to run at a high idle or full throttle. So instead of buying a carburetor and trying to tune it up and think with that anymore, I uh, come across the deal of a lifetime. I bought a brand new 179cc LCT engine. They are the engines that they put on like the Toro snowblowers. It comes up to about a 4.9 horse engine. It's got a three quarter inch output shaft on it for $49.95. Come from Surplus Center out of Lincoln, Nebraska, which isn't too far for us. We could actually drive there. It's about an hour, maybe hour and a half away. Um, I end up just ordering this, had it shipped. And as I'm making this video right now, I just looked, there is three still available. And I don't know how long they'll last. So if you're interested in getting one or purchasing it for any other projects you have, you might want to hurry up and do that. Probably won't see, very, see this very well, but 179. Let's see here. 179 cc LCT Storm Force engine for $49.95. And I bought a two grove pulley for $17.30, if you can see it. Yep, there we go. I bought a single groove pulley for $7.25. Uh, shipping to my house was $26.19. Total price I paid for everything was $105.91. And I could have went and bought a horrible freight engine, or what I call horrible freight. For $135 with a coupon. But I figure this is gonna save me money because I'd still have to buy the pulleys for that too. So I'm already 25 bucks cheaper, at least. That's because I wouldn't have to fight. I'd pay uh, the shipping on it, but still probably about a, at least 25, $30 savings. With this setup versus the Harbor Freight engine. So this is a, what they call a double shaft engine. It has a single shaft coming out, your main shaft that we that most engines have, but this has a second shaft and they're ran by a gear system on the back side here. So if I spin this one, it is spinning, you can see there. It's spinning that other shaft backwards. So I'll show you what you need to do underneath here to get, otherwise your drive will be, your drive gears will be backwards. You'll have two forward gears and five reverse gears instead of five forward gears and two reverse gears. And uh, so I'll show you how, what you need to do with that. And uh, this is a five horse engine and that's gonna calculate to out to about a 4.9 horsepower engine. Uh, I've read on these, this being a, the, the double shaft there tum, comes out, they, they say it, that you're not getting a full five horse rating on this main shaft because you're because it's using some of the energy to spin this other shaft inside there so you're actually losing the output of the engine i don't know if that's true or not i'm hoping it is since i bought a 4.9 horse and went down in size instead of up in size like the harbor freight engine would be but it's worth a shot because if this doesn't work i'll uh scrap this project i'll Either buy the Harbor Freight engine and, or, and put it on here or just throw this in the iron and get rid of it and break down and buy a new one. And I'd use the, this other engine for something else. So I will get the engine off here and start working on mounting it and I will show you how we're going to do this all. Alright, here it is guys. Surplus Center. Going to go to my engines. There it is, the 4.8 horsepower, 179 cc LCT L Storm Force engine. It's a snowblower engine, 49.95. They still currently have three in stock. The only reason they consider this a snowblower engine or the only difference is, is this really tall dipstick tube on there. 
the way the shroud is on here, they uh, normally have a shroud up over top that covers the, uh, comes clear up here to keep the snow off of it. So you can shorten that or just leave it like that. You make a shroud. I don't know that I'm gonna make a shroud for mine. I think I'll just probably leave it the way it is. Maybe make a little deflector for some of the snow, but they normally keep it shroud clear up and around here. Keep the snow packed off there, but then they have this shroud that comes up over here to be able to have extra cooling for it. But they still currently have three in stock. Hopefully when this video does get posted, they still have a few. So if any of you guys want to get one, you're still able to. All right, I got the old engine off and the new engine set on there. Got some bolts holding it on. The first problem that you're gonna run into or that I ran into was that the block on the old engine was tapped. So the bolts came in from the bottom and screwed right into the block into the mounting holes. So you'll have to change those out into regular bolts. Not that big a deal. You can get them anywhere. Probably have them on your shelf if you're doing a project like I am. Uh, I got the pulleys on there. They're not lined up. There's no uh, key stock in there to hold them on the shaft. They're just sitting on the shaft right now to make sure they line up. Everything looks good. So what I'm gonna do now, before I get too far, is that I put the handle on, the pull rope, because it just comes up over the uh, dipstick tube here. Got it tied on for now, it works. But I'm going to take these bolts out of this and I'm gonna rotate this so that the pull rope is not coming down into the, the carburetor and the exhaust. You don't have to grab it, it's not gonna get hot and melt there. I'm gonna turn it so it's pulling on this side so it's out in the open so there's no interference there. The next problem that I'm going to run into is that this exhaust pipe is blowing straight into the chute. And as I turn that, like it's always gonna be there. It's always gonna be blowing right into there. So I will probably just heat this up and bend it, whether I take it off the engine and, and do it that way, or I try to do it on here. I will let you know how I do it. I'll probably show how I do that. And I'll probably just turn that either up or out. And I'll probably just turn it out so it's blowing out at an angle away from everything. Okay, so this pull rope, you just be able to pull the, uh, I think there's only three screws holding it on, unbolt that, rotate it to the new line. There's holes all the way through here, so you'll be able to rotate this. And I'll put the screws back into the holes and show you what it looks like when I'm done there. Okay. Getting, I'm working on reversing the gearbox because this plate here is going to be spinning the opposite direction of what it was originally because it's only got that one shaft. I've taken the shifter out, which it ran through here, with the arm on there and the pin in there. I've taken that off because I got to flip that 180 degrees because it was on here like so. And I need to flip this around so it's on here like this. To make it easier for yourself, which I wish I would have done, let's see if I can do this one-handed right here. I have my tripod set up. So this used to sit on here this way. And I'm gonna flip it over. Do yourself a favor when you do this, put a line, either grind a line in here or a sharpie across the center of that shaft on here so that you know when you flip it over which way that's going to be oriented. Because I did not do that, I actually am going to make it harder for myself, but I'm going to flip this shaft over or flip this over and weld it on there. And the pin is easy, the pin just goes in the opposite direction, stuck through there and on but now my bolt hole might not be lined up with where it is on the shaft on this side this where this sticks out 
because it's just a straight line. I would just would be able to just to flip that around and put the bolt in. Same thing, but because I didn't mark it, uh, this hole might not be lined up right, so I might just have to weld it, which isn't the end of the world, but it would be a lot easier just to be able to put it on there. Because then when I reverse my shifter, everything would be in a line. So, like I said, I would just mark that with a lot with a either grinder line or a sharpie. I tried sticking this back on here to fi find where it lined up with the grinding marks, but because I cleaned it all up, it doesn't really do you any good. But so I will cause myself the headache, but so hopefully save you guys the headache. I'll show you what it looks like when I get that far. All right, I got it mounted on here now. It's not perfect, but it's going to do for now. Once I get done with the season here, I will uh, come back and make an adjustment here. Because right now I'm in a forward gear, which this would be spinning this direction, which this is going to be spinning this direction. So that is forward. But as I come down to about there it's hard to tell but that's almost going to be right in the middle there is a reverse gear but that is actually one in forward so i'm off by just a little bit so like i said here will be about neutral And then there would be like first, second, third, but it's kind of off as it moves. I can make a few more adjustments here with the way my shaft, as this shifter shaft comes down. But I do have forward and reverse gears and it's not gonna be just two forward gears and six reverse, or six, yeah, two forward gears and six reverse. So it will do for now. That's probably about third normal forward, but I don't need to be flying everywhere. I don't need to go super fast, so it'll make it'll be make do with where I'm at. So time to flip this back over, mount the gas can, and shut off stuff, and go from there. All right, the next thing I did was I had to adjust this exhaust pipe. It was blowing straight forward right at this shroud for this, for this snowshoe here and I didn't want that so I heated this up with the torch and just bent this, put a pipe in here and bent it and just kind of turned that away. It did kink it just a little bit, it didn't keep around of course, but I don't think that it will uh, affect the output of the motor that much. I mean, there's a little bit of exhaust or back pressure there, but I don't think it will. If it does end up causing problems or whatever, I'll end up cutting that off and uh, welding the pipe and changing that a little bit, open that back up. But I said, I think it'll be okay the way it is. But I had to get that turned. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a bracket to mount my primer bulb and mount the uh, key switch here. It's just a plastic key that sticks in there to keep those terminals separated. We'll pull that out so it'll kill it or and uh, the kill switch so it'll kill it and then or prevent anybody else from starting it. So I'm gonna mount that up. Not quite sure how or where I'm gonna mount that. Then the last thing I gotta do is mount the gas tank. I'm gonna use the gas tank off the old snowblower because this does not come with a gas tank. But for $49.95, you can find a gas tank just about anywhere. Then it should be ready to test her out. And if you guys haven't seen my latest short video, I do have a 100 subscriber giveaway coming up. If you guys are watching this video or any YouTube video for projects like this, this modifying the snowblower here, 
you know, doing the engine swap, changing it out, you know, or uh, mod putting the light on there. You know, the skis, projects like this, you know, just trying to make some of the things you have a little bit more useful without going out and breaking the bank and buying something brand new. It's what a lot of my videos are gonna be about or have been about is just making my, making my own things or modifying my own things to rather than going to buy them. You, can, you can't always make something cheaper than you can buy it. But a lot of the times you can save quite a bit of money by doing it yourself or making yourself or modifying it yourself. And if you guys are into those types of things, then you would, you'll be interested in this. I won't tell you what it is yet, but uh, I will uh, here and once we get a little closer to that 100, 100 subscribers. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. It'll be, I'll have a link at the end of the video or at the bottom, you can click subscribe right down there to help us reach that goal of 100, 100 subscribers. And as always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one.